think we we can start now we are almost 10 minutes behind but um, you know we were just giving the space for our other partners and colleagues to join us uh, but I think we have a sizable number now to get started um, uh, welcome again uh, my name is Anjan Bose I'm from Ekpat International and um, this you know is a very uh, specific um, group that we have here at the IGF everybody almost everybody knows everyone and I would just um, start by giving you the or explaining the format of what we are going to do today uh, which is very similar to what we had done uh, in the past um, I will start with giving an introduction to uh, the dynamic coalition on child online safety uh, which all of us uh, belong to here um, for people who have uh, come in uh, new or don't know what the dynamic coalition is uh, let me just uh, very quickly give you the rationale for having a coalition uh, um, like this uh, we know um, you know back uh, the IGF process started in 2006 in Athens uh, but there are not many uh, child rights agencies present at that time uh, to uh, bring uh, we know the internet plays a very important crucial role uh, in the work that we do um, on our issues on individual you know whatever we do individually um, but uh, in terms of child protection and this, um, you know the uh, child rights agencies that are present here uh, not all our work was visible uh, and uh, we wanted to you know form a structure uh, that would uh, keep the momentum going keep our work you know visible to the policymakers we and also give a permanent structure um, to every following IGF uh, where you can raise issues you can share your work you can build capacity of other uh, peers and other agencies most importantly to bring the key concerns related to child protection uh, to the policymakers here uh, at the IGF because we know IGF is a multi-stakeholder forum where we have the presence of um, not only civil society or child rights agencies but international organizations law enforcement um, uh, from the states the government and practitioners and that's why um, you know um, at the beginning uh, in Rio when we 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 got together and we felt that there must be a a way of keeping uh, giving some uh, sustainability to our efforts and make them visible uh, at this uh, you know very big event and since 2007 where we kind of formed uh, many of the members who are here Janice is here Naveen is here uh, Juta um, I, I mean I, um, uh, Sandra probably came one year after you know at the same time uh, it was a collective push to uh, to you know uh, let our work continue and be visible because we know there are some workshops that um, are given for talking about these issues but because of the diverse nature you know when you talk about child protection we have seen yesterday and day before that w we are looking at different components different elements of our work which cannot be brought together in under one workshop because you get started talking about uh, ch empowering children then you move to you know more criminal stuff uh, looking at policies and you cannot bring everything the legal aspect working with social issues you cannot put everything in one workshop or two workshops and that's the beauty of this forum is it brings all the stakeholders together and all the different disciplines we have uh, to uh, not only share what we are doing and it's it's also moving forward and identifying directions for us you know how do we wh how do we prioritize our actions for the following year so I mean that is the way you know I, I feel uh, it's it solidifies our belief in what we are seeing others are doing uh, if something works it's a forum for sharing lessons learned challenges and also informing others uh, whether you know th this might be a right approach or not so I, I think that kind of gives you a background of uh, of this particular dynamic coalition that we have I have to say we meet once a year but many of us actually remain in touch we do uh, interlink with each other throughout the year and some of the contacts that we built at this forum uh, influences us to or to engage us 
uh, in you know regional activities, um, uh, inter international activities, and we form, which is a very key element here, the network here, the connections here. And I would really encourage you to uh, to keep in touch, uh, to um, you know exchange information between ourselves, so that you know we can be more dynamic in that sense. Uh, there are some uh, logistics issues which I would like to raise here. Um, maybe uh, we wouldn't have time at the end. Uh, for any of you who do not have a list uh, you know, in, on the website, if you find your name is not represented on the website, please uh, let me know so that I can follow up with the Secretariat to have your name visible and you feel part of the, of the network and this coalition. And I think that's a very important thing to start with. Um, and uh, so having said that, let me get into the substance of uh, today's discussion. What we will do is we will provide a slot. Every year we do this. We give uh, one or two presentation slots, very brief, uh, four or five minutes uh, maximum, uh, to agencies who have already requested in advance. You can keep this in mind for the next year. You can actually ask in advance if you want to speak or present your work as a presentation. Uh, we then we will, um, after the formal presentation, uh, which will be given by Naveen today, we will come back across the table in around the room, and each one of us will have time to present your work and you know, just identify who you are and some of the key initiatives that you have been engaged in for the last one year. After that, what we will try to do is pick one, um, after we have gone through each one of us, we will try to highlight what is common, what comes very you know, strongly across the board, that this is the issue that everybody is working on. So what could be some of the challenges around that and how do we prioritize that moving forward? And the final step would be, so as I said, divided into three stages. The last stage would be using this platform for effective policy making, um, lobbying with the IGF uh, forum. Uh, so our discussions do not remain confined within this room. It uh, has the power to influence. Uh, that's the reason why we are here. How do we make those uh, move? You know, how do we make the dis discussions that we are having here come out of this room and go to the main plenary session? So we'll have a bit of brainstorming around that. We'll seek input from all of you. Um, so I, with that, I pass on uh, the microphone to uh, Naveen. Um, um, I think um, uh, everybody here, most of us already know Naveen Taufik. She is uh, from Egypt. She was with the Ministry of um, Communication and Information Technology. And um, she will present the work that they had been doing uh, over the last uh, one year or so. So over to you, Naveen. Thank you so much, Anjan, for your introduction, and good morning to everyone. Um, I would like actually to make uh, a very, I'll try to have a very brief presentation about the work of uh, Egypt uh, from Nairobi to Baku uh, since the IGF 2011 to 2012. But before I start on our activities, I would like just to mention uh, the, the, the experience of Egypt with the Dynamic Coalition. I have to say that it was actually thanks to the Dynamic Coalition that the whole program of internet safety has started in Egypt. And I cannot uh, forget actually the work that, uh, or the meetings that we had in Hyderabad in India and uh, through the Dynamic Coalition as well as the INAXO because it was thanks to this aggregate of people that we started to learn a little bit of how to proceed in our program in Egypt. So I have to thank you, to thank actually every one of you uh, for helping us in our program and I hope that in the next years, we'll have more and more countries 
coming uh, to have uh, internet safety programs uh, thanks to the dynamic coalition because it's an excellent actually aggregation of individuals and experts in this field so again thank you and Jen and thank you to each one of you um, what happened in Egypt uh, from Nairobi to Baku are some activities in different areas uh, but most importantly it's in the area of content uh, creation for uh, internet safety and I have to mention here the work that we have done with um, the, the I keep safe and connect safely. You have maybe in front of you some of the booklets that we have produced in Arabic. The work was done by Larry Maggot and uh, Anne, and we have translated and localized this stuff in Arabic. It was very important because we had very little material about Facebook privacy uh, and all issues uh, that concern parents and uh, children uh, available in Arabic. So thanks to these efforts, we have this material now on our website, uh, the MCIT website. The other uh, activities or content that was produced is also work with Microsoft that was localized and um, availed also in the Arabic language. We continue in this trend, uh, coordinating with different partners internationally and picking on the material that is relevant to our region. The new thing that we are doing now is actually the policy guidelines, uh, the protection of children outline um, online by the OECD. And we have an agreement now with the OECD to Arabize and localize this excellent report that you could find online and we'll have it soon available uh, also online. The other thing that we have done, and I think Susie might be here, uh, Susie from GSMA, yes, Susie, hi, <laughs> is a study with GSMA about uh, the usage of mobile by uh, young people in Egypt. The study was uh, done, it was a comparative study with Paraguay, Japan, Egypt, and India, and we had some interesting results. It was actually one of our mobile operators that helped us uh, conduct the study on the local level, Mobinil, and we had excellent, actually, interesting results. <laughs> uh, we'll find that uh, from the, the, the sample that we have uh, interviewed, we had interviews for pairs, actually, ch uh, parents and children. And we found that in Egypt, in comparison to Paraguay, India, and Japan, uh, that 94% of the sample of uh, children interviewed uh, access the internet uh, from uh, the mobile. We had also, we found also the high mobile uh, uh, penetration that reflected on the children. Again, you see mobile internet being accessed in Egypt much more than uh, the other countries. So this is very important for us as policy makers to make sure that we have maybe to focus more on the protection on mobile internet, even much more than the internet uh, through PCs. A very interesting uh, fact that we notice in Egypt is the level of use of social networking services. L look at, uh, maybe you can look at uh, the presentation uh, behind you and the in on this side. 86% uh, of the children uh, interviewed or surveyed uh, in Egypt were accessing social networking services. Uh, in another study by Microsoft that we have conducted, uh, this year, we realized that the main uh, social network uh, that was used by children is Facebook. We had a 100% actually uh, from the sample that uh, we interviewed by with Microsoft. Concerning privacy issues, uh, we real or the statistics said that 44.5% uh, of the children interviewed are using some kind of privacy uh, setups. Parents are claiming, 68.9% are claiming to put rules for their children. Of course, we have a big question mark of on whether uh, children are following these rules or not. Um, we're going, this, this study, I'm, I'm not covering all the statistics or the findings of the study because this will take some time, but you can access actually the results from the GSMA site or from the MCIT site. Uh, the first phase of the study was, contact, was conducted in four different Egyptian governorates to make sure that we're not covering Cairo only because this would be quite biased. The second phase of the study, Mobinil has agreed actually to conduct it and it's covering four other different governorates and we'll have the results very soon. Based on the study, we got this idea together with GSMA and SUSI to conduct maybe a study, comparative study for the Arab region because we realized that we do not have statistic comparative statistics between Egypt and other Arab countries. 
we are struggling now to get enough operators of uh, our financial support to conduct these studies in different countries of the Arab region. So if we have any Arab countries represented here, maybe this study should be also made on the African level. One point, one very important point, we have hosted uh, a month ago, I think, uh, the Arab IGF in Kuwait. And uh, in line with the work that is done here, we are going to launch a dynamic coalition on the Arab level uh, for child online protection. And we count a lot on this dynamic coalition to uh, activate the, the child online uh, agenda in the Arab region. Another point that I would like to mention is that there is going to be a, a, an ITU regional, uh, based on the ITU regional workshop, uh, that was uh, made in Algeria. We're going to have actually a working group, an Arab working group on legal issues, and I would like you all to, uh, to encourage you all, particularly maybe uh, uh, ICMEC, uh, because of uh, your legal interests, to guide this um, uh, working group and to help the Arab region move in the right direction. Last point I would like to mention, and then I will close, is a study that was conducted with Microsoft. I won't be able to go through the details, but again, it was focused on the parents and the parents' perception of how their children are using social networks. So this is very briefly what we've done, and I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Naveen. Um, is there any comment or question for Naveen from the floor? Anybody wants to ask? Uh, maybe, you know, uh, Naveen, is there any particular um, recommendation or cha um, challenge that you face during the work that you want to share with the group? So if they're interested in doing yeah. similar work that comes to your mind. Um, well, the main challenge that we are facing now is to keep um, the, the, the child online uh, project uh, alive in Egypt. And I think this is also a challenge that is faced by many Arab countries that are going through what is known by uh, the Arab Spring because there are so many um, other issues that are competing with child online safety, maybe even more important issues. So we, can't, we count on, on your support to, to keep this agenda alive in our region. And it doesn't mean financial support, it means expert support, knowledge sharing support for that. The other challenge that we are facing is a tendency also that we are seeing very uh, very often now to mix again between child protection and adults protection or uh, censorship in general and some some people would claim that by blocking some sites uh, for uh, for adults that we are protecting children at the same time and uh, recently we've came not just recently but throughout our work we came to realize that the protection of children requires much more than blocking some sites it's a mixture of uh, awareness raising education it's a whole setup of uh, of, um, of training that cannot be just um, uh, confined to blocking uh, some sites. So I just want to encourage you please to address and to promote more your work in our region and on the African region. Thanks so much. Uh, so after this brief presentation, what we will do, as I said before, we'll go around the table. Please, we have, I don't know how many people here, 30 people. Uh, it would take uh, more than an hour if we go full length, each one of us. So I would really urge you to introduce yourself and focus on what you are doing currently and so that we can pick up on the main issues. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Agnieszka Wrzesień. I'm from Poland. At, at this meeting, I'm representing Inaxo Network. Uh, Inaxo is a, a network of uh, 19 NGOs from uh, across the EU, uh, child rights NGOs, and we also have uh, six associate members in countries like Russia, Ukraine, uh, Turkey, and uh, Armenia. Our mission is to promote different actions at national, European, and international level, which would promote children's rights in relation to internet and uh, new technologies. Uh, our, the base of our work is the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. We recognize all the benefits and fantastic opportunities that the internet and new technologies uh, can bring to young people, but at the same time, uh, we see a lot of issues, challenges that need to be identified, that need to be better understood and addressed uh, further from just 
many topics still need to be worked out, that there are no ready answers, there are no uh, answers in textbooks where many of us could just, uh, could just grab and, and understand. Uh, so, yes, um, uh, the profiles of our members are, ver are different, although we are all work on uh, based on the uh, convention, but the profiles uh, of our members are often complementary. We have different levels of expertise, so within the network we try to identify be best practices, we try to share uh, these practices and then uh, simply to become more, more effective in our strategies. We constantly do uh, various mapping ex exercises, uh, mapping different uh, developments which are going on in the world of, of online uh, technologies. We identify new uh, challenges and design uh, strategies which then would allow us to, to be an active uh, players, to be active players in public debates. Uh, over the last year we have worked a lot uh, on the topics around citizenship, so how this concept is understood in the digital, digital era, how young people understand this concept, what rights and responsibilities uh, fall under it and how uh, how it affects the position and, uh, of children and young people. Uh, one of the issues that we have identified as an emerging trend, and cer certainly this will be the topic that we'll be focusing on in the coming months, is the children and e-commerce. Uh, you will probably agree that uh, commercial companies have identified children as a very important target market. Uh, children are important uh, future uh, customers for many of these companies uh, and it's, uh, it's um, well understood as um, already now uh, the best prices to be found are, are to be found online so we perceive that it, this is very important that children uh, learn to manage budgets, that children uh, learn how to engage with, with e-commerce practices. Uh, and another issue which is very closely linked to that is uh, privacy. Uh, so, uh, already now, children are uh, an important target uh, for companies uh, selling uh, well, games, uh, companies targeting children with, with uh, advertising, so we also think that that would be a very important uh, area of work where we would like to engage with, uh, with um, industry players and developers. Thank you very much, Agnieszka. I think you know the one of the things that you mentioned is this uh, move towards the link between e-commerce. And what we can do is, as we move around, see if others are doing similar work. And if you can point to certain linkages between child protection issues, privacy issues, and e-commerce issues, you know exactly you know, how the vulnerabilities can arise when targeted marketing is done to them, and what needs to be put in place to, you know, so that we, we, we are actually empowering our members to deal with it and do the right advocacy. Thank you, Agnieszka. Yeah. Yes, Janice. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> I represent INSAFE, which is the European network set up by the European Commission in 2004, comprising an awareness raising center, a helpline, and a youth uh, panel in 30 countries, 27 EU countries, plus Iceland, Norway, and Russia. Um, I, I will divide what I'm going to say up into three bits. Uh, policy. There has been big changes with what we're doing over the past year. We no longer talk about safer internet. We talk about a better internet for children and young people. This places the focus somewhere differently. For example, uh, focus on positive online content for young people. Also, uh, a focus on, yes, citizenship, literacy in its broadest form, but also advertising. Do young people really recognize it? What do we do about it? We've been working closely with industry in the CEO, coali well, their CEO coalition, but we have been at all of the meetings trying to encourage them, and you'll learn more about that at the workshop tomorrow morning at 11. Uh, in terms of resources, every year we do a best practice survey. Last year this pinpointed that we should focus on the under seven year olds, and I think most of you are aware of the activity book we brought out for this age group. This year it's shown us that we should be focusing on teens, and in particular on peer advocacy. So we, with the support of Google and Liberty Global, are in the process of creating an activity book for teenagers that young people can actually use with other young people 
to help them look at issues of privacy, but also being good reporters online because we know more and more that their information can be extended very broadly. Um, next, we're looking at schools, and we know, for example, we've done a survey with schools and discovered that 0% of the schools we surveyed actually have training policy in place for teachers on all issues concerned with safety. This is within a project called an e-safety label, and here we're looking at setting up an accreditation process for schools. Uh, one aspect of this is incident handling. We're setting up an intelligence system where schools tell us how they handle the incidents that arise. We co collate this information so that then when a school is confronted with an issue, they can look into the database and see how other schools are tackling this. Lastly, Safer Internet Day got bigger and bigger. 10th anniversary celebration on the 5th of February 2013. So far, last year there were 100 countries participating. So far this year I think we're at 107 or 108 uh, participating countries. The theme is online rights and responsibilities. Here we're linking up with the work of the Council of Europe, the work of other areas focusing on human rights. And uh, the theme is connect, uh, the slogan is connect with respect. And I hope if you're not signed up, if you don't have a Safer Internet Day committee in your country, I hope that you're going to come to us and set up a committee because it's a means by which twice a year we can provide you a, a package of resources for schools in your country. That's about it. Thank you very much, Janice, for the update. I think that was very informative. Um, one important distinction she pointed out, I would just like to quickly touch on that, moving from safer internet to better internet. How do others around the table uh, connect with that idea? You know, uh, do we mean that the internet is already moving towards a safer zone that we feel comfortable, that we can now move towards empowering, or it's empowering children will ensure that safety is already you know, in place. So maybe a thought to explore as we move on. Um, one more thing, yeah, we have also done a uh, you know, kind of project in the CIS region, which, which looks at um, the policy in schools. And it's very interesting that you mentioned this incident handling stuff, uh, how they can create a database of incidents. I, I think we can you know, look at that collaborative approach afterwards. You know, I think it's a good tool to, to, to use. Thank you very much. Um, excuse me, uh, the gentleman over there, would you like to, uh, excuse me, do you want to make an intervention or you want to, okay, maybe what I will do is while he collects, I will move to Arvan and uh, ask Arvan to say something. Yes, Arvan, you can get started. I hope it works. Yes. Uh, I am Arvan Parfentiev. Um, I represent Safe Internet Center Russia and uh, Emerging Russian National, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. So, as for us, uh, we uh, participate in uh, Safe Internet activities which are held mm, worldwide by InSafe, uh, where um, uh, Safe Internet Center for Russia, and uh, therefore we participate uh, in um, uh, all European activities, including Safe Internet Day, uh, which is being held annually uh, in Russia. Safe Internet Day is being held in the form of uh, Safe Runet Week, uh, which is a set of events uh, which uh, touches uh, Moscow and the region. Um, we run uh, the hotline for legal content, we have a helpline, and we operate a youth panel. Uh, since Russia is uh, quite a big country, uh, we point uh, much attention for um, regionalization of uh, our service. Uh, so we um, expand our regional presence uh, uh, with stress to awareness raising unit uh, units in the regions, uh, in order to um, children, parents, uh, educators, uh, social workers to have the information and uh, training point. Um, 
uh, at the place which can be reached for them easily. Uh, so uh, we in the center and um, uh, regional uh, points uh, uh, run regional youth panels, um, uh, do awareness raising. What we do also, we try to involve uh, youth actively into production of awareness raising materials uh, uh, in order for them to be most suitable uh, for their target audiences, for children. Uh, as for uh, tendency for, um, for, for moving from safer internet to better internet, uh, actually, we understood uh, long ago that uh, just uh, protective means like uh, blocking illegal content mm, or something, uh, tha that's not enough. Uh, one of our main directions in, in work is to bring internet technologies into ensuring uh, safety process in general, to, ma uh, to put the internet technologies in service for a better environment for children, parents and so on. So we came to the idea of expansion of our functions, so we came to the idea of um, uh, National Center for uh, Missing and Exploited Children. Uh, so uh, we do, uh, we began to do awareness raising on a um, uh, wider set of uh, issues. Uh, uh, we uh, organize the whole rehabilitation center, so that doesn't mean only consulting like most of the helpline does. We uh, set a network of uh, trusted specialists and services, and our case managers are to uh, control the whole rehabilitation process event. Uh, we try to put um, uh, special uh, software, knowledge, know-how and activities in order to help children, in order to search them, in order to identify missing and exploited children, in order to uh, identify children that became uh, targets of uh, illegal exploitation. Uh, and uh, in order to help uh, law enforcement, uh, in order to help uh, civil society activists uh, to um, uh, make a better environment for children. Also, we try to bring as many participants as possible, internet industry, law enforcement, government activities into uh, awareness raising work in order to set uh, their own uh, programs. We share expertise, uh, we try to organize training, seminars and so on. So th uh, that's our move to uh, from safer, from just safer internet to better internet environment for children where internet technologies use for uh, their better. Thank you very much. Um, um, I think you know what, uh, what's important here is the range of activities that you do. Uh, so when we go around the table, if someone can, can again, do, um, they are doing similar work, because I just want to highlight one thing again and again and again, is education and empowerment and awareness is one of the key issues, but it's supported by, you said, hotlines, the work with the law enforcement, the work with the private sector, those are as important um, <coughs> for the holistic uh, approach. Uh, yes, Jutta. Yeah, thank you. My name is Jutta Kroll. I'm representing the Digital Opportunities Foundation from Germany, and I think we've been founding member of the Dynamic Collision in 2007 in Rio. And uh, regards to our work, it has been fastly developing from that time. Uh, there have been ch some changes, but there has also been one part which is continuing over all the years. And I've spread around these, these leaflets you might have seen about a project that we are very grateful that the European, European Commission decided to fund for 24 months. Um, those, is, those of you who have been attending yesterday the workshop on the United Nations Charter of the Rights of the Child might have heard that uh, many, many people there stressed the need to build up the resilience of, of children and youth as a um, universal remedy uh, against uh, risks and threats that children might face on the internet. So the more resilient children are, the better they, they can cope with all that they face on the internet. And, and this project I've been talking about is it's uh, I'm trying to train social workers so that they can help children to build up their resilience to to be able to cope with with online risks and threats and and what is very important is that it's a knowledge enhancement project that means 
that we are able to evaluate whether it really has an effect on, on the work of the social workers that attend the training sessions and whether they will be able to integrate uh, the use of digital media in their work with young children. Because my organization has been working with social work for more than 10 years and what we faced is there was a change during the last two or three years with social media becoming more important. Also the area of social work uh, learned that social media could be a very important part of their work, but also it's up to now it's not part of the education of social workers to deal with social media and to include the use of digital media into their work with children and young people. So this is part of the training, addressing the needs of especially children at risk, vulnerable children, and I think in one year's time I, I will be able to present you the res results of the evaluation work we are doing within the project. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jutta. I think you gave a different you know, perspective of the work we are doing. Uh, move on to Jim. Yes, hi. Uh, Jim Prendergast with the Galway Strategy Group. Uh, I do a lot of work with actually Microsoft, who unfortunately could not be here today. Um, you know, I obviously wouldn't do justice to everything that Microsoft is doing in this space by trying to summarize it here in a couple of minutes, but Naveen had already referenced some of the work that they've been doing in Egypt and providing some research. Um, the thing I would like to point out is um, we had a, a panel session on Tuesday. It's sort of a continuing series that uh, Ann Collier and uh, Kim Sanchez from Microsoft and with ConnectSafely.org did. And um, our goal with that was to talk about digital citizenship and see if that message is resonating amongst youth. We had a, pan uh, a group of about 50 people in the room, I'd say uh, 35 or so were youth. Um, and it was a, a great session in the sense that there were zero presentations. It was immediately a wide-ranging discussion. Um, I counted on you know, my hands as quickly as I could. We had interventions from about 27 or 28 different individuals, and um, what I think was the most valuable uh, feedback that we got is uh, some of the theories and some of the language was confirmed uh, as being effective and resonating with youth. Uh, from around the globe, and at the same time, some of the language that we were using uh, was rejected and uh, is going to force a lot of us to go back to the drawing board and sort of recalculate how we're talking about these issues. I think uh, a couple of folks already mentioned engaging youth to develop materials so that they resonate better with their colleagues and their, uh, with their contemporaries, and I think that's a very important part of the feedback loop because uh, as we're developing these programs, you need to make sure that uh, your messaging is resonating and connecting with the folks you're actually trying to reach out and serve. So, thanks. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, hi. I'm Gry Hasselbald from the Danish Media Council for Children and Young People, and uh, we're actually also uh, the Danish uh, Awareness Center in the InSafe Network. Um, it's just very nice to hear uh, your comments about youth engagement and um, just to make a short comment uh, that kind of says something about the way we work in the Danish Media Council is that uh, on this whole topic about safer internet, better internet, to be quite honest, uh, I don't want to be too provoking, but I think it's kind of the same thing. Uh, we're still s emphasizing the same approach, one that focuses on internet as a more traditional media that we can shape in a certain direction. Um, but I think that the most important thing is that we try to start changing the focus uh, from the internet to the users, the digital citizens. And one way we can do this is, uh, as you just emphasized, was the empowerment of the young people. And that's why it's so wonderful to see all the young people. I wish there were some here. Maybe I should have brought some. Um, because we can do that by involvement. And that's uh, part of the work. If I look back at the year of the Danish Media Councils and our work is that we've done quite a lot, lot of uh, initiatives um, focused on engagement of youth. We started already in 2009, uh, where we brought 4,000 young people's input to uh, the IGF in Egypt. Uh, this year we've had young people uh, at the Eurotic, uh, we've had the Nordic Youth uh, Forum. We have a lot of young people here, a Nordic Youth delegation. Um, and um, I just think that, that that's the way forward, um, and, and that's my main contribution. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick comment. Uh, we haven't come across half of the room yet. Uh, we are. We have to really push, um, make the, you know the key statements. Uh, introduce yourself and say what your organization is focusing on. Thank you. Uh, 
No? Okay. Yes, Susie, yeah. Hi, uh, Susie Hendry from the GSMA. Um, I, uh, GSMA is the Global Trade Association for the mobile phone industry. Uh, Naveen already touched on one of the core aspects of our activity, but I just wanted to quickly uh, make some points on the other work that the mobile industry is doing around child safety and child protection. Um, we're very focused on informed policy making, hence why we undertake uh, research with partners in markets around the world. We also are focused on demonstrating how industry self-regulation can achieve positive outcomes. And one of the examples of that is the Mobile Alliance Against Child Sexual Abuse Content, which is a global voluntary initiative where mobile operators sign up to ensuring that their networks remain hostile to this illegal content. And then the other um, thing that we are actively engaging in is communication of the positive aspects of mobile use amongst young people. And I think that touches on what my formal co uh, the previous colleague was talking about. Uh, it's not about protection anymore. It's about all the opportunities uh, that mobile and technology offers young people, but also what young people are offering in terms of innovation. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Susie. Uh, yes. Um, yes, this is Yenis, and I'm with the Dacus Foundation. And uh, we're working on an initiative of having a new GTLD, which is uh, the Dacus. Uh, we hope to create such an internet namespace specific for Truden as the uh, which they are the primary targeted um, beneficiary. And we use the UNCRC as our basic guiding principles, which is that a mission is actually hoping to bring more Truden to participate in this internet governance discussions, which I agree with all the others said about like the youth empowerment and also like educate them. And so also as well, which another very uh, second point is we want to advocate the kids friendly content. We want to create a better internet for the children, not only safe, but also kids friendly so that they can really understand what is going on around and also advocate the basic rights of the children as well and so actually we're hoping to get more uh, different children rights organizations to involve in us because another main thing is that we're a not-for-profit foundation so we will want to reinvest all the domain registration profit into the children rights community and then help do all sorts of these uh, initiatives Thank you. Thank uh, you. Do you think, uh, just one more question, yes. do you think that dynamic coalition, this particular coalition can help uh, yes. young people to get more mainstreamed into the IGF um, forum? Well, actually, I think it is. And actually, I think this coalition is pretty, like, a, a good one for connecting all the different children rights organi organizations together so that we can really uh, get together and do something about this. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. And. We will get a different perspective from Alexander, of course, you know, coming from Council of and working on cybersecurity. So your thoughts, please. <coughs> Thank you. And uh, not really cybersecurity, more the criminal justice aspects of, yes. of it, cybercrime. And in that connection also, uh, child abuse online because it's part of cybercrime. Uh, Stephanie will maybe later on come up to other, other issues that we're doing in the Council of Europe. I would just point out one particular initiative uh, where you, Anchan, are involved, and hopefully also Naveen and, uh, and Sandra and others uh, can be involved. Uh, one year ago in November, on the 1st of November in uh, last year in Hanoi, Vietnam, uh, Interpol General Assembly adopted something called a legislative engagement strategy that was elaborated together with the Virtual Global Task Force on Against Child Abuse, which are operational law enforcement agencies. And they adopted the re that resolution because they came to the conclusion that you cannot get law enforcement cooperation to rescue children, prosecute offenders, if legislative frameworks are not in place in different countries. So they looked around and they found the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime and the Lanzarote Convention on the Sexual Exploitation and Sexual Abuse of Children as setting benchmarks that can be used by any country. So in this legislative engagement strategy, they recommend that countries put uh, frameworks in place along the lines of these two treaties. Um, 23rd of November last year, the Council of Europe and the Virtual Global Task Force signed an agreement that we will cooperate with each other in this. Uh, we are now providing support to countries, legislative advice on how to implement such legislation. Uh, but we are also carrying out uh, a fairly detailed studies on a study on how countries can make use of this, uh, do make use or can make use of these benchmarks. There will be the VGT conference on 
um, 11 to 14 December in Abu Dhabi, and there will be a legislative engagement workshop. ICMEC will also organize a plenary session there, uh, and there we will present the study and discuss how practically to engage governments in such reforms. So, Nevin, would be good if you could also come there, that's why I mentioned it yesterday, uh, to see how this can fit in and what you mentioned in the, in the Arab region, how to engage in legislative reforms. Uh, perhaps this will also be useful for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexander. I think you know that's another important component of the, the tools that we need to have, the legislation, the right legislation. And again, the dynamic coalition facilitating connections and bringing the right people to the right place. Um, moving next. Uh, Hi. Hi. I'm Barbara Liliu. I work for Inaxo, and Agnieszka already told, uh, told you who we are, what we do, and what our priorities will be for the next two years. So I won't steal any more time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, Sandra. Okay. Hello. Um, I apologize. I'm losing my voice, so hopefully you can hear me. It's okay. Um, my name is Sandra Marchenko. I'm with the International Center for Missing and Exploited Children, or ICMEC, as you may have heard us. Um, our work is kind of divided into two pockets, the sexual exploitation and abuse of children and missing and abducted children's issues. Um, and we're the sister organization to the National Center in the United States. We're actually working with quite a number of people in the room on different issues, uh, but primarily we work um, a great deal on research initiatives, such as the child pornography model legislation, which we're working on the seventh edition now and should be ready by the beginning of the year. But we're also looking at, uh, we have a child protection model law now um, in conjunction with John Hop Johns Hopkins University. And we're working on looking at online grooming. And we are working very closely with the CIGF on a number of initiatives on the Commonwealth um, Cybercrime Initiative and also the update of the toolkits, uh, excuse me, toolkits. Um, where we continue to do law enforcement training around the world on computer facilitated crimes against children. Um, and we work very closely with a number of regional agencies on that, uh, OAS, CARICOM, ASEAN, and others, uh, and very closely with Microsoft on those issues as well. Uh, we continue to run the Financial Coalition Against Child Pornography and are expanding the Asia Pacific Coalition. Um, we have just, uh, probably the newest initiatives that we've just rolled out maybe a month ago, a new global health initiative, which will look at the issue of sexual abuse and exploitation of children as a public health issue in order to engage pharmaceuticals, hospitals, and other medical practitioners in looking at this particular issue. Um, we continue to work with the Russian Federation and with Belarus and other countries on the creation of the national centers. Um, and on our Global Missing Children's Network and our other missing children's initiatives, we, we still coordinate International Missing Children's Day on May 25th, um, and we're doing um, a significant amount of research on that issue as well now. Thank you very much, uh, Sandra. Um, I, I just want to raise one thing, you know, the financial coalition aspect of the work that ICMIC does. Um, I haven't really seen that aspect catching up, you know, in other regions, which su it's such an important work in combating crimes against children, uh, stopping the flow of, you know, tr if you money, uh, buying people, allowing uh, credit cards to be used, for example, you know. How do you see that? Um, is there a message that you want to give to other people in the in the room that if you can facilitate that for other partners, you know, uh, we felt that you know particularly in Africa, which where online transactions are not that common, but will come. Uh, in Latin America, for example, uh, how would you you know propose to move this in other region? Uh, certainly, on the financial coalition front, it has. Um, in some regions, it's been slower moving. Um, in the United States, it's been obviously very, very well taken up, and 90% of the payments industry in the United States participates in the financial coalition. There is a European coalition in place, uh, but we're only a, in an advisory capacity for that, for that group, and it is also undergoing a number of changes. The Asia-Pacific group has continued to grow the most quickly, but we also have a coordinator on the ground in Singapore, so it's, it allows us to be able to work very closely with groups like ECPAT and others and really have the industry participation. Um, as far as Latin America, which was our next target area, it's been much slower moving um, and has moved, really it seems to have moved from a regional focus to Brazil, and even so it's stalled out because Brazil is very kind of slow in the process. We would like to see it, of course, expand. That's the other thing I would like to raise. You know, when we are mentioning the initiatives that we are doing, all the other members are, you know, uh, free to approach 
and learn more about you know the issues, the challenges, and what it takes to to move things forward. So that's one one reason why we are here. Thank you. Yes, Veronica. Yeah. Um, thank you. I'm, I'm Veronica. I'm at this meeting, I'm representing uh, Child Focus, which is a Belgian safer internet center and, and also part of in the InSafe network. Um, basically, we do pretty much the same work as other I uh, InSafe, uh, uh, other safer internet centers have been uh, introducing. So we have also an awareness um, center. We, uh, we do have a helpline, but we also run the hotline. Now, um, not, not to repeat what we've been talking about, because I, I'm pretty sure that you, you, you know, most of you know how the helplines and, and, and the hotlines and the safer awareness centers work. I'd like to focus on, on one specific project we are running right now um, within the, the, the helpline. And uh, our institution is not just a center uh, on dealing with e-safety, but also with uh, the sexually abused children and also with missing children. And within the Department of Sexually Abused Children, we, we run an e-safety helpline, but at the same time we are running a project which is called Chat Vice. And in this project we are exploring new ways of uh, actually offering assistance to sexually abused children uh, via um, um, online technologies. And we are focusing in particular on, on chat services. So w what we did was to implement a chat where we can actually um, talk uh, to young victims of sexual abuse or potential victims of other young people who might need be in need of help, and they just want uh, to contact the center in, in anonymity, in total confidence. So they're coming to our center, and we are doing action research on this initiative. So uh, the interesting thing about this, this project is that basically what we did, apart from, from having this action research part, we also um, have, uh, we made an inventory of existing... No, can you hear her, all of you? Maybe it's uh, my headphones. Okay. okay. Uh, we also uh, made an inventory of, an ex of similar initiatives in Europe. Uh, we have identified uh, different centers w uh, developing chat and um, using the chat to, to support children who have been sexually abused. And, and we are establishing a network of, of different kinds of social workers dealing with, with this issue in particular. So wh what I would like to, to, to point your, your attention to, and if you're interested, please um, get in touch with me. We are uh, starting to develop in collaboration with the, the Center for Digital Pedagogy, uh, which is also help r running a helpline, the Cyberhus in, in, in Denmark. We are starting a European platform for online help protection. And actually, uh, our idea is to get together social workers dealing with issues such as these, but also with other issues like violence against children, e-safety, but all, all kinds of children that, that are involved child protection online. And we want to do, and I was just thinking about Utah here, that you were talking about your project. It's um, to bring uh, best practices to together to develop a platform where we can share these existing initiatives, but also to provide support to centers who might not yet be using online technologies to support children. And uh, our idea is to actually run a platform where we can just have a space, an online space where we can share experiences uh, first in Europe, but our days to make it as global, as international as possible, provide expertise, but just from people from the field. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's quite an interesting initiative because uh, many people uh, have um, expertise, but many others don't have any. So it can be a good place where, where people can just come and say, okay, well, you have a chat, how do you implement it? What kind of software is it needed? How do you deal with, with, uh, with specific cases? Of how can you use social networking sites, for instance, to help sexually abused children? So I might give you afterwards, maybe if anybody's interested, please just um, maybe we can <laughs> give exchange contacts afterwards. That would be, would be great. And I can give you more information and even give you the presentation. Maybe you can, you can send it. And Excellent, Veronica. Thank you. Yeah, I think you know, that shows that what uh, members can contribute and it's very important that this uh, dimension that you mentioned about using online tools to provide. It's not you know, collecting information when people are in distress that online tools are also useful to get back to them. You know, I, I think that's important. And the capacity, the specialized attention and capacity that's required. Uh, because sometimes we do things from volunteers, from interns who are not able to cope up with that. And it will be very helpful. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stephanie Burrell. I come from the Council of Europe, but for, from the Children's Rights Division. 
Uh, just to get, give it a little bit of background, uh, I represent a, a program which was established in 2008, Building a Europe for and with Children. We've just adopted a new strategy uh, for 2012 until 2015. It was adopted exactly at the same time as uh, the Internet Governance Strategy, which will be carried out until 2015. So, of course, we do have a uh, transversal issue. We're a transversal program, so we work with different sectors, the education sector, the youth sector, the cybercrime sector, um, internet governance sector, and we've got four uh, priority objectives. So we promote child-friendly uh, services and systems, which include healthcare services, social services. Uh, we try to eliminate all forms of violence against children, so this includes <laughs> Uh, ensuring additional ratification to the Convention on the Protection of Children Against Sexual Exploitation and Sexual Abuse, the Lanzarote Convention, in, in cooperation also uh, with the, the Budapest Convention uh, promotion. We guarantee the rights of children in vulnerable situations, such as in alternative care, street children, and we promote child participation. So all this, our intention is to uh, implement these strategies, uh, priority strategies, uh, both offline and online. Currently, our first step is to really focus on the education of children, and so we cooperate with the youth sector, which, is, which has jo just launched a uh, project on hate speech online. Uh, you may have attended the workshop this morning, uh, which was very interesting with um, lots of young people. Um, but uh, we, we also have a, a game which was developed quite a, f a few years ago called Through the Wild Web Woods, uh, which has been translated in more than 20 languages and has just been translated into Armenian, for example. Uh, it's been uh, downloaded quite a lot and it's, uh, we've had a lot of interest, but we're trying to improve this game. So I'm also uh, tr uh, uh, launching a call as well for a cooperation from the technical community or possibly uh, academic community to see how we could do this. Um, of course, we also have a monitoring body to the convention, the L Lanzarote Convention, which is currently, uh, which has just started its work with its member states, uh, which have just ratified. Uh, there, are a, s a questionnaire has been sent on uh, particular issues related to the provisions of the convention, including on online sexual abuse. Uh, to see what are the problems and to also uh, highlight what are the best practices because that is the aim of this body is to uh, support the member states in m implementing the convention. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. I think uh, that the range of activities that you are doing resonates across you know, what others are doing as well. So we all feel that this is moving in the right direction. So over to you, Jong Hee, please. Hi. Uh, enlighten us about the COP initiative. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello, uh, good afternoon. This is uh, I'm Chong Hee Kim from ITU, International Telecommunication Union. Um, I put my brochure on your table in front <laughs> of you so I can make a very short, brief introduction about child owner protection. Uh, ITU COP was established under the framework of Global Cybersecurity Agenda, GCA, back in 2008. Uh, I believe that half or maybe two thirds of here, the, um, we have uh, working together, you know, the ACPEC uh, Ac Ac International from John Boss, you know, and then it of course Naveen, and Suji from GSMA, and ACPEC International, Sandra. Working with our partners, we provide a platform to share the expertise and their uh, coordinating their activities together through the all around the world. Uh, simply say, uh, ITU child owner protection activities is in the five strategic pillars. Uh, let's say the first one is the legal measures. Under the legal measure, we are providing roadmap and guideline for the government and stake uh, policy makers to help them to set up their guide uh, policies and to for domestic their their own uh, their own nations. <coughs> Excuse me. The second level is technical and procedural measure. ITU is a specialized UN agency for ICT. We, ITU, especially the sector, the standardization bureau providing uh, international global standard for ICTs, general. 
uh, last year, this standardization group created joint coordination activities group, the JCA, which is under the ITUT standardization group. This group inviting all the technical experts to um, all around the world and let them discuss about the as, uh, technical aspect of child owner protection, which is very interesting topic. You might think that uh, what kind of technical aspect they could discuss. That's why uh, this, this kind of curiosity start um, is the base of creating this kind of joint activities group. This group is basically with the ITUT sector members, ITU development bureaus members, and our uh, radio communication bureau members. But we can invite you as an uh, expert in your area, so you can contribute to their discussions. And uh, the third area is uh, organizational structure. I, I think uh, some of previous speakers mentioned about their national center for child owner protection. As a being organization, intergovernmental organization, we are helping uh, our member states to set up their uh, main, main national center to protect children online. The first one is capacity building. Most of we share the issue. And then the fifth one is a nation international cooperation. That's what we are sitting here. Uh, since the last IGF in Nairobi, Kenya, we found that the most challenge we are facing in this issue, child owner protection, that uh, first one is issue in Africa. So we have actually have seen that you know, there are very lack of capacity, uh, lack of awareness, and lack of protection for children in Africa continent. That's why we are working with our partners, COP partners, including she is nogging <laughs> the GSMA, Suji. Um, so we, was, we, will, we are working on the preparation for the Africa Child Owner Protection Summit in June next year. We are actually on the process of discussion with our partners. If you want to join our summit, more than welcome. And if you just let me know, I can provide more information about that. The second issue, major issue we are facing is the, the involvement of children. You know, I think I don't need to go further about the how it's important. And under the patronage of the President of Costa Rica, Chinchilla, we are going to have the Youth Summit in San Jose, San Jose Costa Rica next year. It will be September 2013. Uh, we will invite all young children around the world as possible as we could and uh, let them discuss about the issue. So, of course, we want to invite you all. I think I take... She, he actually pushing me a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Jung Hee. Uh, so, uh, good update from ITU COP, and mark the calendar for next September, San Jose. Uh, yes, Tiago. Uh, I think we had been hearing a lot from Europe, from yeah. Africa. I think you are the only representative here from Latin America, from yeah. Brazil. Yeah. So, it would be very interesting to see what you have to say. <laughs> Oh, oh, you're from Chile, sorry. Chile. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you are representing the work in Belgium. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you, Arjun, and good morning, everyone. Uh, well, I'm, my name is Thiago Tavares. I'm from Safer Night in Brazil, uh, which is a civil society organization responsible for the Brazilian uh, Safer Internet Center. Uh, we are responsible for the Brazilian Healthline, Brazilian Helpline, and also for the awareness that. And over the last uh, five years, since our first meeting of uh, the Child Online Safety Coalition in Rio de Janeiro in 2007, we are uh, very glad uh, that we are closer and closer, uh, we are much more closer and closer of uh, uh, our uh, colleagues uh, from NICSAFE and in Hope Networks. Uh, we participate uh, actively uh, of the Safe Internet Forum, Safe Internet Forum, over the last four or five years, uh, we organize uh, the Safe Internet Day in Brazil since 2008, uh, and we last year start uh, three uh, youth panels on different states: São Paulo, Rio Grande do Sul, and Rio de Janeiro, and. Uh, probably on the next year, we will uh, organize uh, a, 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 a national conference uh, of youth, uh, bring together all uh, 
participants of the different uh, state uh, youth panels that we have in the country. Remember that Brazil is a very big country, so we have diff seven, 200 million people live in the country and uh, 15 million uh, internet users are between 6 and 12 years old. So uh, it's a big challenge when we think s strategies in a country uh, like uh, with so many people and with uh, the territory so big. So we have 27 different states and regarding youth panel we started uh, our project on the three uh, biggest ones. And uh, another piece of information that we that I, I, I like to share uh, with you is that uh, interactive two that you can see on the screen. Uh, that too uh, was launched uh, three years, three days ago, last Monday. And uh, for the first time in Brazil, we are putting on the web all the data, all these the indicators, all the stats, uh, stats information about uh, uh, the hotline reports. Uh, on that too, you can interact with uh, the data. You can uh, evaluate uh, how uh, the Brazilian people uh, uh, report uh, the content regarding child sexual abuse images, but also hated crimes, uh, trafficking persons, and other human rights uh, violations. And also you can see uh, where the content, is, the content that Brazilians are uh, reporting uh, is hosted. Uh, we uh, traced uh, content uh, hosted in, in eight, nine different countries. And only 2.5 uh, of those reports are hosted in Brazil. So this is one of the our biggest uh, challenges when we think, for example, uh, on the law enforcement side, uh, on how to prosecute uh, those criminals that are committing crimes in Brazil, sometimes against Brazilians, but uh, hosting the uh, illegal content uh, abroad. Uh, this is uh, still uh, a, a challenge in, in, in my country. And, and finally, uh, we uh, set up uh, our national helpline uh, on the beginning of this year. Uh, we have four uh, psychologists that uh, are working uh, as a part-time, six hours per day, uh, interacting by a chatting to uh, to help uh, children, parents, and educators to how to deal uh, with uh, child safety online issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, regarding this presentation, is does anybody have a question regarding you know the process, the implications, the privacy issues, you know all the things that come with data mining and you know um, this kind of information? If you have any question for Tiago. Um, if it's a very brief question, you can raise it now. Otherwise, you can talk to him after the after the workshop about what it is supposed to do, uh, what are the process, the rationale for starting this project, and how we can help. Um, and I think what you mentioned uh, at the very end is the chat, you know how the helplines are also using online tools to help parents and teachers. It's, it reflects what Veronica had already mentioned before, and um, where I know the INSAFE group in Europe has a lot of helplines and maybe something that they can also contemplate in using if they're not already using it. Uh, exactly. Yes, yes. I don't, I, I'd like just Please. to clarify uh, one piece of, one comment uh, regarding the financial coalition is that in uh, 2009, uh, 40 uh, financial institutions uh, signed an agreement in Brazil to create uh, this financial coalition. So uh, this document is already signed and is uh, become uh, uh, it's valid. So uh, we can, uh, of course, ask uh, them to uh, take measures uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, the commercial uh, websites uh, that involve child sexual abuse images because they signed this agreement in Brazil and they are committed to take measures to deal with this. Excellent. I think there should be a link up between the financial coalition sure. in the US 
uh, all the learning and the good practices th that has already been you know, achieved should reflect on this work too. Thank you very Thank much you. for sharing that piece of work. Uh, I've already gone across the table. I will save myself. I'll go to Giacomo for the moment. If you can briefly, within a you know, um, couple of minutes. You, w you will start a new round of the table, <laughs> no? Very briefly, um, you, I represent, as you know, the European Broadcasting Union, uh, the public service broadcasters of Europe, uh, North Africa, and Middle East. And uh, for us, the mm, protection of children is um, one of the priority, of course, and one of the distinct uh, elements of mm, our uh, raison d'etre, let's say. Um, we have a new frontier on which we are working in, in these days that um, open uh, new threats, uh, but also new opportunities, of course. But um, and, and this is the merging of um, uh, into the same screen of uh, the internet regulation that are very light and are ve and are global, with the um, television and media regulation that are very tight and usually are national, or in the case of Europe, regional. Uh, this is the case of the hybrid television, where in the same uh, TV screen in the uh, living room, to as from today with the new models of television, you can receive two signals at the same time, the signals coming from the internet and signal coming from uh, television. Uh, this completely could change the situation in, in terms of all the ages of um, uh, implementation of legislation that has been made in order to protect uh, the viewers, uh, because the in the internet the subject has to protect by himself, while in we consider that the viewers have to be protected at all, but directly by the broadcasters, the, uh, avoiding uh, a certain number of um, or blocking a certain number of uh, illegal contents or um, contents that could harm and uh, create troubles. With the connected TV. This control is not anymore in the broadcaster's hands, uh, is not anymore in the hands of the viewers, but is mainly in, in the hands of new uh, intermediary that are those that control the software of the connected TV and in the hands of those that um, control uh, the kind of access to the internet that could be provided. So in, in the case of Samsung, Sony is in the hands of the electronic consumer producers and in the case of the um, Apple TV, Google TV, is in the hand of the uh, internet service provider. This creates uh, enormous trouble. We are working closely with the European Commission. There was um, uh, last week, uh, practically in Cyprus, the f a first meeting of the European Commission on that. Uh, there is a green paper of the European Commission that will be uh, published by the end of the year or, or probably in January to which we have contributed, raising the issue of the chi uh, child protection that is very essential. And also we were talking with the Council of Europe because Council of Europe is thinking um, of making of that uh, a topic for a recommendation. The situation is very uh, evolving, uh, so, so, so there is nothing stable, but the threats are all there and uh, we have to be vigilant, the broadcasters and the online actors. Thank you very much, Yokomo. I think that it's a very unique uh, issue that uh, will probably surface in other regions as we move internet to our room through the TV. And uh, complete, you know, the regulatory approach, the policy, the decision making, it's something that we probably have to learn from your experience later. And thanks for sharing that. Um, I would conclude, you know, uh, with, with the initial presentation um, from my side. Um, ECPAT International, um, it's the key work that we do is uh, protecting children from sexual exploitation, uh, all forms, not only online, but you know, from uh, children in prostitution, child sex trafficking, trafficking for sexual purposes, and um, tourism, traveling sex offenders when they travel from one place to another uh, for sexually um, um, abusing children and exploiting them. Just uh, the key initiatives that I would like to share with you here, uh, one is uh, what um, uh, Alexander had mentioned before, the Virtual Global Task Force. ECPAT is uh, one of the members of Virtual Global Task Force from the private sector, we, even though we are not really 
private sector company, but that's how it's seen. Um, we are contributing uh, to the f opening session of the conference that Alexander mentioned earlier, uh, bringing victims issues, you know, how children are victimized online, uh, what kind of uh, therapeutic response should be provided, care and protection services should be provided, and bringing, you know, putting the focus on the victim rather than on the offenders and investigating offenders, which is traditionally the law enforcement approach. But so that is one area. The second one, which he already mentioned, the legislative engagement strategy. We also work, um, you know, in 75 countries where uh, we produce country reports for all the countries that we work in. And that's an enormous effort, looking at, you know, legal framework, uh, youth engagement, child protection issues, uh, prevention, uh, it's divided into four very specific uh, key areas. And that helps us to analyze uh, what the country is doing in terms of policy, in terms of uh, practices, and inform the government in terms, and we, uh, it's a tool that can be used by all the members here. You can go to our website, look at the country report for each of the countries that we work, and uh, use that for you know understanding what is the current situation. Uh, a specific project that I would like to highlight, and that is the last thing I will say, uh, uh, internet safety project that we did in three countries in CIS. Uh, it started with uh, uh, Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia, and now we have included Moldova as well. Specifically looking at uh, or targeting at uh, the administrators of the school uh, for implementing a robust set of policies, um, helping them to uh, define like an acceptable use policy, response mechanism if there is an incident, and of course including all the educational and you know empowerment activities that we normally talk about on internet safety. And we have done it in, the, in a very interesting way uh, through certification. So if the school passes all the five modules, they get a certification, and it's a very exciting way for them to get engaged because they want them to you know kind of come um, as a um, uh, champion uh, of uh, internet safety and will show, uh, you know, example to other schools. And we found that this approach really worked well, rather than just going out and uh, teaching them or training them, uh, maybe uh, this is uh, one more step ahead, which we are really, uh, mm, you know, com compelling them or, you know, attracting them uh, with the right incentives uh, at the end of the project. So that is uh, something that I would like to share with you. And if you are interested in uh, you know, learning more about the pilot, I shared with a research that we did last year uh, in Africa. I'm not going to repeat that. But it's very helpful to know that many of the members who are here, um, we come, came across uh, empowerment education uh, as a very key uh, area that all of us are already engaged in and moving from safer internet to better internet, digital citizenship, empowering children. Um, we have maybe another seven or eight minutes maximum, uh, so I would use this opportunity to uh, not go around again, but put a question to you. Uh, you can raise your hands, maybe we have time for three or four questions or suggestions and inputs as to what do you think about the IGF and how can the dynamic coalition uh, make a difference um, in the IGF deliverables, you know, each year, we, this is the seventh year, the seventh IGF, and we have seen incremental progress, we have seen more participation, better visibility of the issues, but is that enough? Is this something that we uh, will stop at? We will keep doing the same thing over and over again every year, we will just present what we are doing? Or if you have a suggestion for the coalition to take it one step forward, how can we do that? So I will just open up the floor with uh, Janice first. Anyone else wants? Yes, Giacomo, and then anybody else? Wants to just give us some more you know, insight, some idea, some feedback as to how we can do our work better. So uh, maybe to bring visibility at the plenary as an example. Uh, if there are not more hands, okay. Oh, now I see more hands. Agnieszka, yes. Uh, and you go, m maybe four would be good enough. Yes, Janice. Yes, so first of all, I think it's a great pity that we do absolutely nothing between meetings. We've talked about doing something. We've really not done anything. And what I get as we go around the table 
is that there is quite a bit of duplication of efforts mm -hmm. where we could achieve a lot more if we decided on one or two projects for the year and moved forward with these. Uh, the second thing is you talk about deliverables. I would like to have a really clear idea of what these are so we can contribute to them because I've sat through this meeting and every meeting for the last five years, but I still don't know what deliverables we're actually talking about. So if you could really spell that out or perhaps if we can set the deliverables now for yeah. the next IGF, uh, it, it would let me see the path more clearly. Yes, so I, I do agree with Janice that we should be more in touch on a regular basis, not only uh, meet once per year and, and um, catch up uh, explaining what we have been doing. Uh, another thing which I would like to underline is the importance, uh, importance of regional I, uh, IGFs. I uh, at least from my experience from participation in uh, the European IGF, Eurodic, uh, I know that many issues which are discussed there which are identified there are then brought up and uh, taken up at the global IGF. I don't know how many of us here, I, I also, I'm not uh, really sure if every continent, continent has its uh, regional IGF. At the moment I think yes, and I'm not sure how many of us are involved in those region, regional IGFs, but I really think this is like a, a level that we should start uh, our work and also maybe form some regional coalitions which could then uh, well, lobby at the regional IGFs, and then uh, this this is the power which helps to elevate, to bring issues up to the global level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Agnieszka. And we had a hand here. Um, yeah, no, no, I didn't forget, Giacomo. Uh, I'll come to you last. Yes. Oh, no microphone here. Thank you. Uh, it's actually my first time in a dynamic coalition. I didn't know anything about the dynamic coalition. I, I think it's a really excellent idea. Um, I was working previously with the UN, so I've been in the commission with the CSTD on improvements to the IGF. So we've been thinking about how to improve the IGF for a long, long time. And uh, being a children's rights lawyer, I, I was thinking about the, the topic of children and, and th the thematic approach. And I, I've been quite impressed by the the the, uh, the amount of workshops we've had this year, and I think it's really excellent, very positive. But I think really uh, having clear outcomes, it's really, really impossible, uh, really, really, really fundamental. Yes. Just having uh, clear reports possibly, uh, why not having a, a mailing list so that we can network on a regular basis if pe people have questions on projects, if people have concerns or if people need help from someone who's got connections with uh, the technical community, for example, like someone here had uh, uh, cooperated with Microsoft, that would be interesting. So yes, having a ma mailing list, I think that's uh, something which can be easily done. Um, and I will also, well, for, for possibly next year, why not enhance also the multi-stakeholder approach? Maybe it would be interesting to ensure that we have representative of each sector here to address the issue of children. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, just uh, maybe, uh, before I forget, uh, we do have a mailing list, which, uh, yes, and uh, we, d we are a multi-stakeholder, you know, kind of set up, even though you may not have seen all the members here uh, now, but we do have participation from the industry, from the uh, civil society, and uh, law enforcement as well. I they are technically and officially the members, but what we need to push is better participation. I think that's what you meant, right? Yes. Um, yes, Giacomo, and I, I will, okay, uh, if it can be very quick, very quick, yes. Hello, okay. I will now repeat what previous speaker said. In addition, one more quick. Um, in Dynamic Coalition on Child Owner Protection, Child Online Protection, I mean, Child Online Safety has only one session during this, the whole IGF main session. 
it's very unlikely that other from other dynamic coalition activities. So, but this year in in, um, in Baku, we have so many child owner protection related issue workshop. I think it's very important for us to get involved those other activities and other workshops organi organized by other different stakeholders and get involved and approach the, the dynamic coalition approach. So what I mean is like uh, get involved more involved. Thank I think you. we had said that in, in the past as well. I think that's a very good point that you raised that how do we link up these uh, agencies who are not part of the dynamic coalition but are talking about child protection online at the IGF and b have a better synergy between all of us because we are talking the same thing you know, uh, in different workshops. And I, as I started today, I mentioned that in different workshops, you cannot talk about all different issues, but here as members, you can raise you know, those issues in one forum. So it's definitely something we need to look at. And what Janice mentioned about deliverables, I'll come to Giacomo, don't for I haven't forgotten you. Um, and uh, sorry, I had a question from the back. Yes, please. Oh. Can somebody pass the mic or use, use one of these, please? Thank you. Good mo Is it working? Yes. Good morning, everyone. I'll be representing the Iraqi Communication and, Communi and Media Commission. Uh, just regarding the ITU and the Arab Working Group, as we understood that it's uh, has it's only working on putting a legal frame framework and there's nothing regarding the technical side or the capacity uh, capacity capa capacity capacity building okay i'm sorry uh, is there any way that our commission can help you see cmc uh, contribute or anything please let us know uh, thank you very much for that. I think uh, we, we do look at technical solutions. It's not only the legal framework, it's not only the capacity uh, building, but we also have in our, in our group um, technical agencies who are providing technical support. So yes, we, we definitely can link up. Yes. And as Jong he mentioned before, the ITU's role of technical, you know, the t ITU team, yeah? That's the first. The session ITU and Arab team. The session ITU and Arab region is specialized specific to dealing with specific topic, a legal major, but definitely we are w more than welcome to having you to get involved in IT activities and technical and procedure major and capacity building. Definitely, we have many programs. Uh, yes, Giacomo. Um, I, say I think that uh, with the, implement the, the approval by the CSTD of uh, uh, the new approach to the IGF. I think that uh, it was too late for this year because the approval arrived very late. Uh, the process is not mm, finalized uh, still, but I think that we'll go in the right direction. From next year, uh, IGF definitely could identify some topics on which uh, could produce, if not recommendation, but at, at certain point, uh, some points on which there is agreement on implementation and deliver this to the attention of uh, other bodies that could eventually uh, transform this into concrete action. And I think that child protection is a perfect topic on which everybody agrees on the principle. Then there are divergent approaches on, on the modalities and on the procedures. But uh, is like to ask if you like your mother, 99.9, they say that they like the, your mother. So we, we need to pass to the action and to ask to be effective on this point i think uh, that's very good to know it's positive and that you know it can have some effect um, it's not only discussions and sharing we we do make them accountable right um, now i just want to conclude by addressing janice's comment i think that's something that we really need to move um, keep in mind as we move forward what are the deliverables and what i, I think janice mentioned was the deliverable from this group it's not the deliverable from IGF. It's how we come together and make uh, an impact that, is, uh, that resounds across, you know, uh, we feel there is um, an, an acknowledgement of the work that we are all doing um, at the IGF, that they value and they sense uh, the need for child protection in the core elements of all the other work that's going on. 
one of the suggestions that I can mention now is maybe for the next IGF, it's too late now, or uh, if we plan in advance, have um, an, like a petition or something that we can present at the plenary. Uh, we can also maybe from our individual agencies point of view bring uh, some um, you know recommendations for which we already do we present recommendations when we do workshops but not as a collective dynamic coalition so what maybe that's something that we can propose that um, w after the end of our dynamic coalition meeting we s come up with a set of action plans and we present that at the plenary now it's not easy for us to always get a slot to speak at the plenary we can brainstorm, maybe you can uh, advise us what would be the best way to have this session feed into the plenary. Uh, no, so I, I think these are some of the deliverables which I can think of now. Uh, or if you, if you agree, we can you know, come up with a more structured template. Like these, these are the things that we need to put in place before we, we can approach the plenary. So I'm open to suggestions. Please feel free to suggest and not only expect you know to something to be governed. I think I'll, and I'll leave it to Janice to to elaborate on that if required. Thank you, because I think we still haven't looked at this issue that many of us are doing exactly the same thing. We're not informing each other. You're doing an accreditation process for schools. We're doing it. We're working with the UK, who's also doing it. We could save so much time, so much money and really multiply the impact if we put on the table perhaps, okay, three issues. There are, I know our three issues. My three issues, for example, working with teens to give them a good resource that they can use between each other. Uh, make sure that almost all countries across the world celebrate one day in the uh, year. Yes. But if we put these down on the table and said, okay, um, we engage with this objective then we'd get something done in the year because i fear that we're going to come back here next year yeah. and we're all going to spend an hour saying what we're doing yeah. but we're not going to have done anything together absolutely no no i i think that's very important for us to keep in mind and in the previous dynamic coalitions the sid has really helped in unifying some of the activities together for the INSEF, you know, work that we brought it to the table, other people joined in. So I, I take that uh, as a, you know, a good positive way to move forward. And um, maybe uh, subscribing, having all everybody's email in the mailing list to start with and get the communication started from now. So we will see where we stand next year. But uh, that's a, a kind of alert for us, for all of us. Thank you very much, Janice. And Thank you very much here uh, to all of you, uh, all the participants for being here and um, you know, sharing your thoughts, what you are doing. And it does reinforce the belief um, that this is an important area of work that needs to be pressed and continued at the IGF. So thank you very much.